Hello friends, I'm Mike, the Hi-Fi fanatic behind Audio Architects. For those who are already subscribed, it's good to see you back for more. If you're a first timer and you're into speakers, amplifiers, CD players, DACs, headphones, music, basically all things audio, you're in the right place. It would be best if you stuck around for a bit because I am going to give you an insider look at the Cambridge Audio DAC Magic 200M external DAC and why you should experience different DACs before you buy one. Since I have a slight obsession with CD players, having a quality DAC with an excellent circuit design to bypass the, I mean, come on, let's be honest, less than ideal DACs inside many CD players out there is a necessity for me. Not to mention you absolutely need one if you have a CD transport as I do with the Premier DD15. Therefore, I want to look closely at Cambridge Audio's DAC Magic 200M. In my experience, I've seen DACs take a few forms. There are the internal DACs integrated within larger components, as I've already mentioned. I've seen the standalone DAC, and in the case of the DAC Magic 200M, it's a DAC and a headphone amplifier, which is the form I see a lot of DACs coming in these days. I like this type of format because I often use a DAC and headphone amplifier on my desktop. I run a USB cable from my computer to the DAC, and then I run RCAs into my SVS Prime Wireless speakers, and of course, I use my Hi-Fi Man headphones for late nights. So, when setting up the DAC Magic, I noticed a feature I instantly fell in love with. It switched outputs to speakers when it senses you unplug the headphones from the quarter inch output on the front of the unit. Let's take a look at the unit, how it looks, and some of its most essential features that you should know about. When you start hunting for the right DAC for you, I would look for a DAC designed to match your devices and components well. You must consider the quality of the components you are working with. A high-end DAC is not going to drastically improve the sound from your entry-level speakers. The DAC Magic 200M's $549 price point crosses the river into the upper echelons of middle-of-the-road type DACs. However, its sophistication is heavily dependent on the components used inside the enclosure and overall operation and aesthetics. Looking at the DAC from the front, you see the design of a smaller version of Cambridge Audio's CX and AX series product offerings. It has a lunar gray metal front fascia housing several buttons and lights. From the left, it comes with a power button and a small LED in the center. Following is a source button and a series of source selections utilizing those same small white LEDs. A rather large volume knob in the dead center controls both headphone and speaker output. Next is a filter selection of three white LEDs, a filter selection button, and a series of white LED lights to show the sample rate the device is working with. And at the very far right is a quarter inch headphone output. Hugging the DAC is a flat black metal enclosure. Moving our way to the rear, there is an RCA output, which is how I am delivering sound to my powered speakers on my desktop using the Evergreen RCAs from AudioQuest. There are also balanced XLR outputs to connect to components featuring balanced inputs, two sets of digital coax and optical inputs, a USB input, which is how I'm feeding it from my PC, a Bluetooth antenna, and a five volt power input. It explicitly states that you should only use the provided power supply. However, I like my iFi power supply, so I'm gonna have to find out if using a non-Cambridge provided power supply will actually hurt or impact the functionality of the DAC itself. I'll be sure to report back on that in the description below when I receive correspondence from Cambridge engineering team. Inside the DAC Magic 200M are a pair of ESS Saber DACs. They can handle digital audio files up to 24 bits, 768 kilohertz, or DSD 512, as well as the code MQA for you avid title listeners. If you haven't heard a DSD file or played an SACD, it is quite the treat. However, the catalog of music available in these formats is unfortunately few and far between. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I love that this DAC can recognize when the headphones are unplugged and automatically switches outputs to my speakers. I know it seems like a small win, but it is convenient. I also enjoy how it shuts itself off after being idle without a source input for a bit. Those two features alone are more than many other DACs can already do. 
within you know a similar price range. Switching sources couldn't be any easier. One button navigates through all the sources available. I can say the same for the filter options, which are easy to navigate as well. I did feel the filters were very similar in sound. Honestly, I, I'd be hard pressed to even tell the difference on whether one was active from the other two. I'm not a massive fan of filter selections in most of the DACs I have reviewed, so this is, at least for me, a lost feature. The volume knob has a bit of resistance when turning the knob. It's not as smooth as other knobs, however, I feel I'm being a tad bit overcritical on that. I found the plethora of inputs convenient, but could be considered a little bit of overkill since people generally only have a couple digital sources. For those running various digital sources, this DAC can be a central hub for them all. To connect it to your PC, Cambridge does offer drivers for Windows, which you can download directly from their website. Okay, I know what you all are wondering. How did it sound? Let's find out. I use this DAC as a desktop solution paired with my Hi-Fi Man headphones and my SVS Prime Wireless powered bookshelf speakers, and then implemented it into my primary system, replacing the Denifrips Ares 2 just for this evaluation. The sound was consistent across the board. I felt it was clear, natural, and open. It had balanced tonality across all frequencies. There was a great amount of detail with satisfying dynamics. This unit provided an expansive soundstage. The imaging was spot on when I played it through my Wharfdale Lintons. The DAC Magic 200M represented my music quite nicely, as well as accurately reproducing the original recording with distinct precision. When I used it for gaming, it did lack the punch I would get from other DACs I have implemented on my desktop before. I felt the gameplay was a bit dull and just lacked intensity. The colossal misconception with DAX within a reasonably close price range is that they're all going to sound drastically different. They don't. However, I have noticed that these devices all have very distinct tonal signatures to their particular sound. I know that statement doesn't help someone make a purchase decision, but I hope it inspires you to try different DAX and then make a purchase decision because they do make a difference, especially ones that are well engineered. I don't think you will notice a considerable improvement in quality from the sub 1000 range until you reach kind of like $1,500 mark and beyond. I could have hoped for a bit more bass and slightly more warmth. However, for what it is, it sounded fantastic. I felt this deck would be an excellent option for passionate music listeners. The music files who enjoy their sonic qualities clear, accurate and dynamic. I wouldn't position this to the active gamer, it just didn't have the oomph to be considered a contender for PC gaming. I don't feel competitive gaming was Cambridge's intentions with this unit either way, so no loss. They managed to produce an audiophile grade DAC at an affordable price. Most discerning audiophiles would probably pay significantly more for a DAC with the same exact sound signature and overall quality. I say that confidently because I know that audio purists are very extreme when it comes to a balanced tonality for their music. Most scoff at the idea of tonal controls. I'm afraid I unfortunately have to disagree. I feel that everyone's ears are different from one another's regarding this hobby and subjective listening. We all like our music in our own particular way. So yeah, I would like a bit of punch to the bass and to warm things up a bit overall. In the end, I would safely conclude that this DAC is exceptionally pleasant to listen to, and I enjoyed the music from all the digital sources I provided it with. Thank you all for joining me today. If you are already subscribed, thank you. I have an online shop where I sell audio-inspired t-shirts, hoodies, and other merch to help support the channel. This, this all of this. I encourage you to check it out, buy some stuff, and offer ideas for future designs if you'd like. If you're new to Audio Architects and like it so far, I encourage you to check out some of my other videos to see if my channel is the right fit for you. And I would love for you to hit that thumbs up and end up subscribing and joining me on my journey in Hi-Fi. Thank you again for spending some time with me today. Take care and I'll see you next time.